Hello, welcome to Factorio episode 25. Today we're going to create a another transfer area. And this one will be for plastic, steel, sulfur, coal, stone, and brick. Each one of the cars will be loaded with one of those two items. So well, that doesn't make sense. Each of the cars will be loaded with two items. Um, plastic, steel combined into one car. Coal and sulfur combined into one car. Uh, one train. And then brick and stone combined into one train. In the past, I used to fill one cargo wagon or two cargo wagons uh, you know, one with either all of one or all of the other. So to combine, you know, to make a train of of steel and plastic, I would have the like the first two cargo wagons filled with steel and then the second two cargo wagons filled with plastic. Um, unfortunately, that made it difficult to unload the train because the the uh the the unloader would have to kind of uh handle the unloading in such a way that <clears throat> it just made it really difficult to to put the the stuff it was unloading up past the tracks to the bus and I've already redesigned the unloader for the the mall so that it it's it's going to unload the entire car half of the entire car on one side and half of the entire car on the other side using the the stack filter inserters Yeah, I had made way too many of those steel chests, so I just kind of put them back where I got them. And you can put place an entire stack of items in Factorio into a chest, even though the chest is marked with the red um, limiter to how much stuff can go in the chest. You can still place a stack of items into red squares that have been set to limit the chest. Can't remember what I'm standing around for here. I'm sure we'll. Yep, there we go. Now I did get a connection to one of the roboports on the western wall. And normally I would be concerned about that anytime that you have roboports that um, make the connection, the yellow lines. That means that the logistic bots can actively move between those two roboports. And normally I'd be concerned with that because um, lots of times with these these sections of RoboPort layouts, uh, you don't want them to intermix because what will happen is all of the logistic bots will go uh, 
to perform an action, you know, anywhere where they're those those roboports are connected, and sometimes you want to keep them isolated because the roboports or the uh, logistic bots will will just start, you know, moving things between chests, and lots of times they'll literally just you know, like swarm to one side of the map and then swarm to the other side of the map as they're you know going about doing things and then by the if they go too far you, you'll end up with them uh, having to wait for something to happen because they're clear across the map doing something else so I like to keep my roboports with lots you know lots and lots of logistic bots involved isolated so but since that particular roboport is just used for repairing the wall and uh, the turrets and stuff. I wasn't worried about that connection. Okay, after a couple of false starts, we're starting to, to get this transfer area to take shape. You can see that I've made room for lots of roboports because the... Um, The roboports charge the logistic bots with electricity so they continue to, to move and do their tasks. And if you have lots and lots of logistic bots involved in an operation like this, um, they'll basically they won't have a place to charge unless you have lots of lots of roboports as well. So that's why I you know created quite a few rows of them between each one of the transfer areas. Now I'm making a connection so that the train, the fuel train, can can come up to the location and and fuel the the trains coming in and going out. Same as the copper and iron. Now I ran into a little snag here. I mean, remember a previous episode I was talking about some of the rules of working with railroads and railroad tracks. And one of my rules was that uh, you always had to make a intersection so that a train can fit completely within the intersection and not stick out or you know have its tail end uh, stuck in an, in an intersection. And if you see here, when I hover over the um, chain signal, that that last car is going to be stuck in the intersection, and we don't want that. So. I went ahead and uh, made an executive decision, and I just, I'm just i just going to go ahead and change the route of this particular railroad that I'm hovering on. And so that it won't, that I can move it down a ways so that uh, the intersection will have enough room for one train to fit. Now, since these tracks are only, you know, it's just one train leaving the um, transfer area. I don't need two track junctions here, just one track. And I, the reason why I... I moved it a little ways north so I could fit another line of roboports. Uh, and I did check, of course, that the uh, train could still fit within the intersection. So now I just need to add a place to, to bring the fuel train to the transfer area so that the trains can be fueled. I have to be able to, trains have to be able to enter the transfer area from both sides. Now you can create a blueprint for that junction, you know, because most of these junctions are the same junction over and over and over again. I mean, 
you can create a blueprint for those it's, and use it all the time. So once again, I'm fiddling with uh, with my uh, the track, hoping to to get an easy solution for the 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 fuel train. But uh, I couldn't really make anything work, so I just settled for a, a simple thing like what we're doing now. A fuel train is such a simple thing. It's just, you know, one car and one chest to supply the trains. I mean, it's kind of a it's kind of a kind of a burden, you know, having to fuel the trains. It's like, why do I have to fuel the trains, you know? Maybe the tracks are like electrified tracks, you know, and the trains run on electricity, you know, sort of like the water pump, you know. You just put the water pump in water and it just starts pumping water. You don't even have to to just hook it up to the electricity it's like you know why they did that because the first thing that you need when you're um putting together your factory is, is electricity right so you, you you put down one of those coal burner boiler things to and the two of those steam engines and you hook it up to the to the power pole and then you start running some pipe from the boiler to the to the lake that's nearby and then you just plunk in one of those uh pumps and it just starts pumping. It's like, well, it must be solar powered or something, right? <laughs> yeah. So why aren't the tracks, you know, just electrified? It's just, you know. So, but they're not, and you have to, you know, run their, your train fuel. Of course, the nice thing about the trains and the fuels that you use is that each fuel is different. So, um, we're using the the best fuel you can make already. So. You know, and that's and that's kind of another point. It's like, well, gosh, it didn't take me long at all to get to a factory to a point where I could run the best fuel. You think, you know, <laughs> it's okay. It's a it's a game and it's fun. So let's just put it at that, and we'll get back to the task at hand. So now we're just adding in the rest of the roboports. What did I run out of roboports again? I think so. Yep. If I'm gonna make if I'm gonna be making these roboports all the time, I might as well speed up the bottleneck for roboports and uh the bottleneck is uh the red circuits. So we have these four red circuits. I went ahead and sped those up and so in doing and speeding those up immediately, I, I wasn't making enough green circuits, so I had to speed up the green circuits. And then the green circuits wasn't get wasn't the green circuit wasn't getting enough copper cables, so I had to speed those up. Actually, it was in the other it was the other way around. I, I did copper cable first, and then I did the green circuits. But eventually, when I was done, we were making much more red circuits than what we were before before I started. So there finally we got the green circuits and now you can just you know slowly increase everything in a little setup like this. As long as you kind of just do them all equally eventually everything will work out. But then you have to kind of take a look at some other things involved. I mean sometimes the belts are going to be too, too slow and you need to upgrade the belts as well. And then, you know, sometimes the inserters, you have to add more inserters or use ones that work faster. And yeah, it just, it's just a never-ending thing where you're just always making things work better. So, you know, what we're, what we're doing now is, is we're setting up for a, um, look at those biters just, Attacking the wall, merciless, 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 merci mercilessly. We're so. What we're doing now is, is um, setting up to 
you know, completely revamp how we used to do things. And the way that we, that we used to play the game, you know, it's we're not we're still kind of in that mode right now because I don't have the uh, it's not completely set up yet. But we used to play the game. We just we started out and we just, you know, started making electricity and then we then we started making the red science, the red packs. And then we, you know, started to do the the tech so that we could do, make more things, you know, better things, faster things. Then we then we uh, started doing the green science and red science combined. And then while we were, you know, adding those sciences in, I started, you know, putting in a few things like making, um, you know, miners and putting miners in a chest and electric miners and also the the blue inserters. And then I started making things like the red belts and but all this time we were just you know kind of always just plugging in stuff as we as we could as we could we never really we never really were very organized about what we were doing but you know, all that's kind of kind of change in a way because when I get this item all going we're going to be a lot more structured than we were before. All right, so what we're doing now is making up for the lack of room that I thought I had when I started the transfer area moments ago. What we need to transfer, as well as the stone and sulfur and brick and plastic and steel and coal and stuff, we also need to transfer lubricant and uh, sulfuric acid. And so the whole scheme that we're doing right now is we're setting up a way to deliver those things to a location on the map that is going to set a set a standard for how that's done. We're using trains uh, to deliver those things to a location. And for the rest of the game, we'll be able to continue to use that location, like the item mall, because we're always going to be delivering using trains. So no matter how far away uh, some item is, you know, where we're actually making it or getting it from or, or delivering it, the trains will be able to take it there as long as we can, you know, lay some track. So we're no longer kind of just putting down belts and stringing pipe all over the place. Now we're, we're always using a, a train loader and unloader as a way of of establishing a place that we're doing something on the map. So once we have the item mall set up and we start making things at the item mall, the item mall actually has a train that um, leaves the mall and is able to deliver the things that the item mall makes all over the map using the train. And so from now on almost anything we make on the map will have a loader or you know loaders to bring things to it and then uh, an un uh, excuse me an unloader to bring things to it and unload you know the plastic steel iron copper and then the the output from that thing that uh, particular part of the map will go out on a train. Uh, it'll be loaded and on a train and it'll, it'll actually go somewhere else. So that's how the game is going to be played from here on out. But we, we're not there yet. And uh, you'll be seeing that in the next episode where I don't adhere to that rule yet because I'm not ready to adhere to it because we still have, um, we're still in a transition between using the, the original item 
the original uh, starting base and uh, and the the new item wall. So, you know, until I actually have uh, places to make plastic and places to make sulfuric acid and to get lube, um, I don't have that set up yet. So we're going to use the, the existing starting base fluids handling to supply the, um, the plastic and the uh, sulfuric acid and loop. And then once I actually get the next fluid handling set up, uh, I eventually need to set up a, a big plastic factory that makes lots of plastic. Um, it's a big, it's going to be big and it's going to be making a lot of plastic, a lot more than we're making now. So uh, until I get that set up, we still have to get, have a source of plastic and that's going to come from the, the starting base. Okay, we're going to have a, a train deliver acid and a train that delivers lubricant to this location. And then we'll have a train going out that, that is basically two of those things combined into one train just like this plastic and steel trains. It'll have two, uh, two tanks of lube and two tanks of uh, acid on the train. So, you know, eventually those trains will actually be delivering to that location, but until they, till I, like I said, until I get the those factories built, I'm just going to use the um, starting base to fill the train going out. And you you might wonder why I don't just bring the um, instead of bringing the pipes of lube and acid to this location. Why don't I just take them to the um, the new item mall that we set up the loading area, unloading area the other day? Well, just because I'm trying to isolate the item mall to work the way it's going to work. And to just do it once, you know, I don't, that way I'm not having to, you know, kind of add the, uh, the superstructure to it. As I go, I'm just kind of, you know, set it up once and it'll be, it'll be done. And it really won't take that much effort to um, create the uh, factories to make the lubricants and sulfuric acid and plastic. I mean, those, those are easy to set up. You just you know, have to have the parts to do it. But we can only do so much at one time, you know, so. And that's, you know, that's a kind of important to remember. It's, so there's an, an achievement in this game you, that you can earn and it's, it's, um, the achievement's called There Is No Spoon. And that is a, it, it has to do with The Matrix. You ever, you ever seen the movie The Matrix? And uh, Neo was visiting the Oracle and one of the kids uh, shows Neo how he can bend the spoon, right? And the kid says something about, how the you don't know, bend the spoon you you bend yourself or something so well the the achievement there is no spoon uh you to earn that achievement you have to launch a rocket within 6 hours 
of starting the game. I think that's I think that's the the right amount of time. And I have never uh, actually tried to earn that achievement. So I've never tried to rush, you know, through the launching of a rocket. But it, it requires a, a focus where you, you know, you don't have, you can't like, to earn that, you can't like, you know, make mistakes and have to redo things and, and, uh, you know, you, you you have to just remain on you know on this schedule practice practically a schedule to um, work your way through the necessary steps to launch the rocket and win the game. It's like you know, I've just I've never actually tried to do it. And you do have to play with the biters enabled, so you have to be you know concerned about pollution getting out and getting attacked. If you have the biters disabled, the, you won't earn the achievement. So the transfer area, it needs fuel for all the trains coming in and going out, or both incoming and outgoing trains. I noticed that I wasn't making nuclear fuel. That's kind of a bad thing, huh? And so I had a mistake in my design that caused the um, the nuclear fuel to not be to not be made anymore. And if I wouldn't have seen that, I my uh, nuclear power would have shut off, and I would have been without power basically. So it was a good thing I happened to notice that when I did because I fixed the problem. I The problem was that the final chest in the 238 sorter where it sorts the 235 on one side and the 238 on the other side, the final chest is the one that had the, the green wire attached to it so that it would stop the, the um, addition of the... Uh, 238 and occasional 235 coming in from the uh, centrifuges from the mining of the ore and that I had just a standard chest on the end of that sorter and there were no there were no red chests for on the 238 that allowed the 238 to go up to the assembler that was making the 235 or that was making the nuclear fuel and so I had to put red chests I just went ahead and put red chests on all of those 238 sorters the sorter chest that accumulate the 238 so that they could the um, assembler that was making the nuclear fuel could get them from any of those chests by having it just on the um, the one that was that ran out well it kind of you know made it so I wasn't making any fuel at all So that's the new transfer area. We have it uh, fully fueled, and we also have the new acid and lube transfer area as well. And I think it's getting fuel as, as well. So um, that's it. We're done for this one. Thanks for watching.